Ticks are the bane of many a camper, hiker, or pet owner. Clinging to blades of grass or low shrubs, these tiny arachnids can lie in wait for days, stealthily climbing onto their hosts as they walk by. The tick then pierces the host's skin with its beak-like mouthparts and begins to drink their blood, swelling to up to 600 times its original weight before dropping off and returning to its nest. But if a little blood loss and the unpleasantness of removing a fully engorged individual from yourself or your dog is the worst a tick has ever done to you, then consider yourself lucky. These little monsters can carry a wide variety of exotic and horrifying diseases, at least one of which seems almost too bizarre to be real. Perhaps the most famous illness carried by ticks is Lyme disease. Named after the town of Lyme, Connecticut, where it was first identified in 1975, in North America, Lyme disease is caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi and it's spread by the deer tick. Native to eastern and midwestern United States and southeastern Canada, the deer tick must remain attached to its host for at least 36 hours before the Borrelia bacteria can transfer to the host. The first symptom, appearing one to two weeks after infection, is arrhythmia myrans, a painless spreading bullseye rash centered on the site of the tick bite, sometimes accompanied by mild flu-like symptoms like fatigue, headaches, body aches, and mild fever. This is a harbinger of much worse things to come, as after four to six weeks of spreading throughout the bloodstream and lymphatic system, Borrelia begins to attack the nervous system, particularly the face and neck. Symptoms include signs of meningitis, such as severe headaches, light sensitivity, double vision, and the inability to flex the neck, weakness or paralysis of the facial muscles, also known as Bell's palsy, and excruciating shooting pains all over the body. Left untreated, Lyme disease can cause severe heart damage, recurring arthritis in the joints, and permanent nerve damage, leading to persistent weakness, paralysis, chronic pain, tingling, impaired cognitive function, and other neurological symptoms resembling multiple sclerosis. As a bacterial disease, Lyme is readily treated with a course of antibiotics especially doxycycline. This treatment is most effective when administered within a few days of the appearance of the bullseye rash. However, as the symptoms of Lyme are easily confused with dozens of other illnesses, many victims suffer for months or even years before receiving proper treatment. Such delays are especially common among the 20% or so of patients who do not exhibit the telltale bullseye rash. According to the CDC, around 35,000 cases of Lyme disease are reported in the United States every year, though given how often Lyme is mistaken for something else, the actual infection rate is estimated to be closer to 300,000. And as climate change causes the range of the deer tick to expand, that number will only get higher. Between 2010 and 2018, the estimated number of cases in the United States rose from 300,000 to 476,000, making Lyme the fastest growing tick-borne disease in North America. More disturbingly, around 10 to 20 percent of patients continue to suffer long-term chronic symptoms even after receiving a full course of antibiotics. This is termed post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome or chronic Lyme disease. In recent years, this phenomenon has been at the center of a major medical controversy as various Lyme advocacy groups working on behalf of long-term sufferers have accused the medical establishment of ignoring these patients' symptoms and even of dismissing them as purely psychological. These groups claim that chronic Lyme disease is caused by the persistence of Borrelia bacteria in the patient's bodies and can be treated by a long-term course of powerful antibiotics. However, controlled medical studies have failed to find any evidence of Borrelia infection in in chronic Lyme sufferers, nor in most cases any evidence that these patients had ever been infected with Lyme in the first place. Worse still, the cottage industry that advocacy groups created for chronic Lyme treatment has, on many occasions, inflicted more damage than the disease itself. Take the case of Heather Jenkins, a 30-year-old woman from Huntersville, North Carolina, who for years suffered from chronic fatigue and other nondescript symptoms. In 2004, Jenkins was referred to Dr. Joseph Jemzek, who suggested that her symptoms might be due to chronic Lyme disease. Despite the fact that Jenkins couldn't remember ever having been bitten by a tick or developing a bullseye rash, a blood test came back positive for Borrelia burgdorferi. Jemsek prescribed a $3,000 course of the antibiotic Rocephin to be administered every two weeks over the course of a year and a half. The various catheters implanted by Jemsek to administer the drug became infected one after another until Jenkins finally collapsed from a massive systemic infection. She spent four months in intensive care, barely surviving the ordeal. Blood tests revealed that her body had been overrun by antibiotic-resistant bacteria, but could find no evidence that she had ever had Lyme disease. To this day, the true cause of post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome remains a mystery, with the leading theories pointing to lingering tissue damage caused by the initial infection or a persistent autoimmune reaction. But as bad as Lyme disease can be, things 
only get worse from here. Another nasty disease commonly carried by ticks is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, native to the western United States, Canada, Mexico, and parts of Central and South America. Caused by the bacterium Rickettsia rickettsi, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is spread primarily through the bite of the American dog tick and Rocky Mountain wood tick. Its symptoms are both more severe and faster to appear than in Lyme disease, the most distinctive of which is a red splotchy rash appearing first in the extremities and spreading towards the center of the body. This is accompanied by high fever, severe muscle pain, and vomiting, which nondescript at first can quickly develop into a life-threatening illness. Left untreated, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever can result in amputation due to blood vessel damage in the extremities, as well as neurological damage leading to hearing loss, paralysis, and mental disability. While fewer than 5,000 cases are reported every year, only 0.5% of which are fatal, prior to the development of broad-spectrum antibiotics like tetracycline and doxycycline, the mortality rate was as high as 10%. This made Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever a viable candidate for biological warfare, and during the Second World War, it, along with other diseases such as Tula Aremia, psittacosis, bubonic plague, rinderpest, and anthrax were secretly cultivated in Canadian laboratories for possible use against the Germans and the Japanese. And for more on this, please do check out our previous video, Gross Ill, Canada's Anthrax Island. The rogues gallery of tick-borne diseases also includes such nasties as tularemia, Powassan virus, babesiosis, cytoxinosis, Helvetica spotted fever, Colorado tick fever, and Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, the latter of which has symptoms similar to Ebola and a mortality rate as high as 40%. But the danger posed by ticks goes beyond the various bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens they can carry, for certain species are capable of inflicting considerable damage all on their own. Shortly after midnight, on June 12, 1996, a six-year-old girl living in eastern Washington state complained to her mother that she wasn't able to get out of bed. Though she slept the rest of the night, she awoke at 7 a.m. to find herself paralyzed from the waist down. Even after being rushed to hospital, her symptoms continued to worsen. The strength in her hands and arms grew progressively weaker and she had increasing difficulty swallowing food and water. However, her sensory perception and cognition remained unaffected, and a battery of tests, including a spinal tap, turned up no sign of infection. The girl was given a preliminary diagnosis of Guillain-Barre syndrome, an autoimmune disorder affecting the nervous system, and she was placed in intensive care. During a subsequent examination, however, doctors found an engorged female Rocky Mountain wood tick attached to the girl's scalp. Amazingly, as soon as the tick was removed, the girl's condition immediately began to improve. So drastic was this improvement, by the end of the following day, she had regained full control of her body and was discharged from hospital. The girl had been the victim of tick paralysis, a strange phenomenon caused not by a bacterium, virus, or other pathogen, but rather a neurotoxin in the tick's saliva. This toxin, found only in egg-bearing female ticks, is pumped into the host's bloodstream as the tick feeds, with the greatest toxin production occurring after the fifth to seventh day of feeding. 43 tick species are known to cause tick paralysis, and in most cases, symptoms usually clear within hours to a day following the removal of the tick with little to no lasting side effects. There is, however, one notable exception which lives in, wait for it, Australia. Of course, Ioxides holosilus, better known as the wattle tick or Australian paralysis tick, has been the bane of Australian cattle and sheep farmers since the early 19th century, their bites paralyzing and killing livestock within a matter of days. Unlike North American species, the wattle tick's neurotoxin is so powerful that it can still kill the host even after the tick is removed. Its bite can also induce severe allergic reactions, including painful rashes and respiratory distress. Thankfully, tick paralysis in humans is relatively rare, with only 20 fatal cases being recorded in Australia. The incidence of tick paralysis elsewhere is unknown, though most cases are reported in pets, livestock, and children under the age of 10. However, far and away the strangest of all tick-borne illnesses is somehow a meat allergy. Known as alpha-gal allergy, this bizarre affliction is transmitted by the bite of several tick species, including the Australian wattle tick, European castor bean tick, and the North American lone star tick. A single bite is enough to induce a permanent allergic reaction to red meat. Unlike a typical allergic reaction, the onset of alpha-gal is typically delayed by around three to eight hours after the meat is consumed, with symptoms including swelling, hives, itching, diarrhea, and respiratory distress. While it sounds like something cooked up in a lab by a vegan terrorist, alpha-gal allergy is in fact the result of an unfortunate chemical coincidence. The saliva of the Lone Star Tick contains a carbohydrate called galactose-alpha-1,3-galactose, or 
alpha-gal, which stimulates the body's immunoglobulin G immune system to produce an antibody called anti-gal. Anti-gal, in turn, triggers an immune response in the presence of the carbohydrate gal-alpha-1-3-gal-beta-1-4-glc-NACR found in the meat of all mammals except monkeys and apes. By now, the thought of being transformed vampire style into a vegetarian is probably making some of you consider making your COVID quarantine permanent. If so, you'll be pleased to know that poultry, fish, and even certain lean meats like venison thankfully do not trigger the allergy. However, as with the deer tick that carries Lyme disease, climate change is triggering the gradual expansion of the Lone Star Tick's natural range, with individuals recently being found as far north as the Canadian border. So enjoy your steaks and ribs while you can, we suppose. The ticks can inflict so much damage really shouldn't come as that much of a surprise. After all, in terms of sheer body count, the deadliest animal on Earth is not a lion, a crocodile, or even a shark, but rather the humble mosquito, which through the transmission of diseases such as malaria, yellow fever, and dengue fever, kills an average of 2 million people every year. In fact, it's estimated that of the approximately 108 billion people that have ever lived, 52 billion, nearly half, have been killed by mosquito-borne illnesses. It is a humbling reminder that while we may consider ourselves the masters of this planet, we can still be laid low by even the tiniest of creatures. So I'm not going to ask whether you enjoyed that video, but I do hope you found it terrifying. If you did, please do smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.